Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the um, All-Star Wrestling Review Series, January 19th, 1980. Uh, 1980, a big year for the WWF, um, not as big as 84, but kind of moving in the direction of a ma some major changes. Uh, this obviously hosted by Bruno San Martino and his fan, including the fan conducting a ringside interview with Freddie Blatty and Hussein Arab who discussed uh, his mastery of the suplex with Hussein and displaying the Persian clubs. Persian clubs a major thing, especially in the Sergeant Slaughter feud a few years later. But, um, you know, I mean, it kind of is there. Um, then we see exercises with Blassie offering $5,000 in 1980 money. Who could match the refs, including the man asking San Martino about Larry Zabisco challenging him for a match. San Martino... Uh, upset that Larry felt the way he did and refuses to face his student uh, in any sort of way in the ring. Uh, but we move to the Intercontinental Champion Pat Patterson pinning B.B. Coleman 534 in a non-title match with a knee drop off the top rope. Post-match, Bruno conducts a ringside interview with Patton, Patton's, he, Patterson who claims he's never felt better uh, now that he's heard cheers of the fans. The actual turn which doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense uh isn't really documented well i'm actually interested to see if maybe uh it kind of happened over time or if there was a incident at a house show that uh, is acknowledged kind of there's a turn away from from captain lou albano that's talked about uh obviously you know pat patterson had been a baby face in the san francisco la territory for roy shire quite a bit uh, and also had been a heel with Ray Stevens as a tag partner. But, um, again, a lot of punch kick. Patterson, by this point, winding down, the, you know, he's around for a couple more years, but by 83, so within three years, he's uh, moving to a, a backstage role. Patterson holds on to the uh, beard of his opponent and also goes back to side headlocks. Um, Patterson, as a babyface, is kind of a weird run. Um, he obviously, the Sergeant Slaughter run, uh, which becomes really major in, in the next little while, and the alley street fight and all of that, uh, which is in the spring of 1971, or 1981, I'm sorry. But anyhow, uh, more scientific match from Patterson. Patterson, at this point, kind of trying to win the fans over. He eventually does the top rope knee drop. And again, the interview is very humble from Patterson in comparison to his involvement with the Grand Wizard previously coming into the promotion and all of that we move on to the next in the series of matches which um, happens to be more towards the uh, wonder that is uh, Rene Goulet pinning Jose Estrada 628 with a gut wrench suplex uh, Estrada obviously a mainstream regular uh, enhancement talent Goulet doing the flying Frenchman gimmick a little bit here although again coming back after eight years absence very good on the mat if you if you need to learn basics, if you need to learn timing, selling, facials, and all of that. Goulet certainly good with that. Uh, both guys grappling over head scissors and other basic things. Estrada managing as an enhancement talent to still look credible. Uh, Takedown and uh, holding him in a front face lock for several minutes. Goulet finally gets out of that and manages to get uh, a little bit of offense before getting taken down with another... Reverse chin lock, and knee bar, and uh, other basic moves by um, the the wonder that is Rene Goulet. And again, he does win the match with a gut wrench suplex, which for the time is a pretty big deal. Hussein Arab says he hates speaking English because it's insulting to his heritage. Says the Iranian people are, in fact, better with oil and all of that. Also indicates that he anyone... Uh, no one will be able to defeat him with the Persian clubs. He does swing them, and I believe at this point they are the legit clubs, not the gimmicked ones that were shown on the collector's show over the last couple of weeks. Uh, then we go to another match in series. This is the uh, match for Ken Patera. Ken Patera with the Grand Wizard defeating Mike Masters via submission 413, swinging full Nelson. The swing full Nelson, if you've never seen it before, does open a good bit of uh, the Coliseum video stuff so that's interesting in and of itself side headlock uh, by masters on patera patera using uh, clubbing 
shot from the middle rope on the inside, tries to get every advantage he possibly can, arm bars and the like, masters, and fights back, but succumbs very quickly in, in about four and a quarter minutes to the um, swinging full Nelson. I, I don't know that I've ever seen someone else do the swinging full Nelson in that way. Uh, then we go to our next match, which, again, the pacing of the show is good. Uh, actually, the more and more I'm watching these old shows, the more I like one-hour wrestling shows versus two-hour. Uh, this is the Tag Team Champions, Ivan Putsky and Tito Santana defeating Johnny Rods and Baron Michael Sakuna in 921. Santana pinning Rods with a uh, flying body press. I don't know necessarily why this match needed to go 10 minutes, but... It does. Match itself is pretty basic. Sakuna had been a major force 75 through 78 into parts of 79, but hasn't been seen as much lately. I think so much new, new talent coming in. That's kind of the thing. Uh, Putsky obviously there for the power moves. Santana there for the finesse. Uh, the heels do take more than average amount of uh, Advantage and Putsky gets choked out over the bottom rope among other things basic stuff nothing Necessarily too serious, but at the same time it's there enough that uh, you know Tito Santana coming in with the uh, Flying body press is happy for the fans uh, Bruno does cut quite a promo on his lack of desire to face Larry Zbysko in a competitive match Basically turning it down. Does not know that uh, Zabisco had the feelings about him that he did. And is a bit frustrated and or hurt combination of both by that. Bruno such a natural speaker that it's kind of cool to check out that as well. Close the program with Larry Sharp defeating Angelo Gonzalez with a pile driver. Larry Sharp who in, ends up opening up the Monster Factory Wrestling School in the New Jersey area for the next several decades before finally... Um, turning it over to various other owners over the years. But anyway, um, um, you know, that's kind of there. And, and again, a Hulk Hogan match here as well. Two on one with, uh, I'm sorry, the Larry Sharp match is on another edition. So my mistake there. Anyway. Uh, the close of this particular edition is the Hulk Hogan Steve King match, handicap match 247. King submits to an overhead backbreaker. Obviously, you're not going to get the same reaction that you would with Hogan, uh, with the leg drop and the and all of that. The idea of putting him against two men is obviously to get him ready for Andre the Giant, which eventually does happen in time for Shea Stadium in the summer of '80. Uh, but um, you know, I mean, Hogan. Does look pretty indestructible here. Bear hugs and the overhead backbreaker and getting the submission victory for Eddie Blassie. Very happy with his uh, investment. And we close on that note. We'll be back with more right after this.